Hello everyone, I've returned with a new video and it's going to be about LED strips. A friend of mine owns this little uh, carnival setup, miniature carnival setup, and uh, it's pretty to see. He's got Ferris wheels and it's got bumper cars with really little tiny bumper cars driving around in this setup. And uh, yeah, it's it's pretty sight to see, but uh, he wanted to spice things up a bit with some lighting. So I decided to help him out uh, with these, these little LED strips. If you take a look at this uh, shooting gallery, I've programmed these little lights here to do what they do. So how does it work exactly? Anyway, there's a 5 volt line, a ground line and a data line, three lines to a single LED strip. And then the data line is shooting zeros and ones, or respectively 0 volts and 5 volts. And at certain timing and at certain intervals to program each and every single LED on this strip to be a certain color. And that's basically it. So. Uh, some programming is required so we've got uh, you can download uh, some software to write this program on your computer designate uh, one of these connections here there's a lot of them and this is a big board so let's switch to a smaller board I got this in China for two dollars so that's not much and it's got these pin connections here so you write a computer program there's this USB connector here and you can connect your board to the computer you upload your little program to this little chip and then you can just disconnect it from the computer and this little chip will run this program in a loop continuously sending out data from one of these pins that you designated in your program and then you get this and that's basically all so let's take a look at the specifications of this LED strip and how this LED strip receives the data so I am moved over to Aliexpress my favorite website and as you can see I searched for LED strip and there are several available uh, some of them are just white and nothing else others can change color but all at the same time not individually so that's not what's supposed to be what i'm looking for is types like these it says programmable or addressable and this type has a ws2812 5050 chip in it which is addressable and uh, but these chips are still a bit big uh, i found this one so this chipset is the 26sk6812 and it works kind of similar to the WS2811 uh, or 2812 which needs to be programmed. Well there's three lines going in red is the voltage line, white is the ground and green would be the data line. As you can see on the strip itself, the pads here, it also says G and D, D and 5 volts. I found a data sheet, I was googling for a data sheet here SK, SK6812 it's got a voltage, power supply, voltage source, 5 volts, and the data in and data out on the ground. And here's a depiction of how it kind of works. You send a zero by sending a pole, a high level pulse for 3 or 0.3 microseconds or 300 nanoseconds, followed by a low value, 0 volts for 0 0.9 microseconds. If you send uh, one signal, a high signal, you send uh, 5 volts for 0 0.6 microseconds and a low signal for 0 0.6 microseconds. The reset code is another one, but we'll get to that. So that's basically a streaming, streaming zeros and ones through this data line. I also might need to explain how to get, how to, get to colors with a bunch of zeros and ones. So I'm going to explain a little bit about binaries. Now usually when you uh, start counting, you have nine numbers at your disposal. So you start from zero at up to nine and then you need to, well, 
add in a digit to keep counting. That's basically it. Well, with binaries, it's actually kind of the same thing, except for the fact that you only have two numbers, which are 0 and 1. So the increase in digits is going much faster. So you just start with 1, 0 for instance, and then with 1, and then you don't have any numbers anymore, so you just add in 1 in front, and yeah, you can start counting in 1, 1, 1, and then you're out of numbers once again. So, you add another digit, and then you can start again. 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, and now you have to add another digit, and so on. But it's the principle is in fact the same. So here's an overview of how this all adds up eventually. When you get to uh, the number 2, you have to shift a digit. When you get to the number 4, you have to shift another digit. And then you have two numbers behind it, so you can make four more combinations. And then you're up to number 8, where you have to shift another digit. And now you have three zeros, so you can make eight different combinations, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then you get to 16, where you have to another shift a digit. And so on. So 16 is 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. And 15 is just one digit less with only ones. And that's basically, this is just binary. Now these LED strips require three colors to operate with, red, green and blue. And you can specify a number between 0 and 256 to determine the brightness of each color. You need, for the numbers 0 to the number 255, you need 8 digits. Which means it is a stream of 24 bits for one LED. To determine the color for one LED. So for instance if you would like to send a medium red color, medium brightness, then you could send the number 128 for instance and then you will have to send seven pulses of 0 0.3 microseconds and one pulse of 0 0.6 microseconds. As for the rest, it's all 0 0.3 microseconds. So you would get something like this. For the red color, you send this range of signals. And then for the other two, you just send these. And then you have 24 bits for one to light up one LED in the proper color. You will be sending 2400 of these signals, just for 100 LEDs. So this is the basic setup for this LED strip. And initially, well, here you have the ground and the voltage, and they all get supplied with it, so they are all connected and they can operate on the voltage. Now, as for the data line, initially, these are blocked. This chip, the first chip here, is blocking all the data that comes in until it receives 24 bits. As soon as it knows which color to be, he says, I don't care anymore about the rest. I'm just going to make a connection to the other chip and send the data through. So that's what happens. So the next one receives 24 bits and it's doing, it's doing the same. It makes a connection to the next chip and just sends the data it receives, sends it through to the next chip and so on and so on. Well, as soon as you send a reset signal, all these LEDs will receive it. They all will start blocking again like so. And you just start over. What's the reset signal? Now, let's take a look at the at this thing here. The reset signal is a low voltage of 50 millis, micros, microseconds. Well, it says here reset 80 microseconds. So you do nothing for 80 microseconds and all the LED strips will reset. But they will remain remain to emit the same color they last received until they get 24 new bits. So that's basically it. I bought this board. It's two dollars almost, like, well, two dollars uh, from China. I don't know how they do it. And I will provide links to this board and to the data sheet and all in the description 
and first once you have this board you need to download an Arduino Pro software so I'm just gonna look for Arduino right here Arduino download Arduino software there we have it Arduino CC and scrolling down a bit I can see the Windows installer here for XP and up so you click that I already have it installed of course so I don't need to do this and again scroll down just download I contribute is enough and then you can store it somewhere and once you have that here it is Arduino 1.8.9 for Windows you can just start it and follow the instructions and then you have installed Arduino I'm starting up Arduino so this is the first thing you see this is the setup coder where you uh, this will be running once and there will be a piece of program that runs in a loop so let's just select a basic script first an example basics blink it opens a new window I can close this one and uh, first what we have to do also is select a board well I selected the Arduino Pro Mini but it said it's a nano so let's just try that for once for a moment and this is the 80 mega and I was told to use the old bootloader here the processor so I selected the processor and uh, I need a port it says com communication ports 1 well I had some trouble with that I'm going to link the, the video to the installation of this board because I think I needed port 3 so let's just say well this is just comments I'm going to remove that anything between these is comments so between these tags or a single line comment is preceded with these double slashes and then you can just write in some comments there so our first let strip program let's say something like that it has a setup a pin mode let built in the built in let is actually pin 13 if I'm not mistaken and we set it up to be output you can also set it up to be input to receive signals like uh, an, an optical end stop or temperature readings or whatever but this time it's an output because we're going to send data and we're going to send data to a LED built-in strip and if you put it high it sends 5 volts out and if you put it low it sends out 0 volts so that's this is the loop function and uh, I'm going to say this is a delay of thousand milliseconds which makes it for a second but let's say let's just make it 200 milliseconds and it will blink a little bit faster like so and this will loop you just write a high signal then you'd wait a moment you write a low signal and then you wait a moment and then the whole thing starts all over again now let's see what it does and if I'm going to upload it it's still busy so there you have it this is problematic so yeah I have to install other software I provided a complete video about that so I'm back here I'm going to select here it is COM3 I had to reconnect it again and now it's COM communication port 3 so let's upload this file once more yeah so it worked and let's take a look at this blinky thingy so I moved back to my workstation here and I've got this board and let's just connect it to some power like a USB connection I put it in a USB charger but let's just connect it and see there's the blink program five times a second so it works 
So that's not nice. that's nice, but I'm not really satisfied yet. I would like to test this thing on, for instance, let's say these are analog pins. It says A1, 2 through 7, and this side says digital, digital 7, 8, 9, etc. Let's take a closer look at that for a moment. Okay, I'm just connected to pin, uh, let's say, D2. Let's connect a LED to this pin and see if that pin is working because I'm going to use pin 2 as a data line and I want to make sure that it works. Now let's, in order to do that, I'm going to use a breadboard. This one. In case you never heard of a breadboard before. These are rows that are connected and connected connected each row is connected on this side and each row and inputs are connected on this side so I can just use some wire and connect it to the power line for instance like this and then connect it somewhere else and I'm going to connect a LED let me see if I got one somewhere so I found a white LED here I just took it from some device or whatever. In this case, a really nice LED, white LED. And it's lighting up pretty well. So, what I did, this is a 5 volt power supply. This is the plus going through here. And then this is all connected with each other. So I'm putting a resistor in, which is 100 ohms, brown, black, brown. I'm gonna explain later. And then this one is connected to the positive side of the LED. It has a positive and a negative side, so you have to be careful with that. And then through the LED, going back to the ground. That's basically it. And I use 100 ohm resistors. Well, why would I do that? Well, we have to be very careful with this board not to blow it up. And I wanted to check what this LED was all about. Let's just measure how much voltage there is across the, across the resistor. It's 100 ohms. Two, yeah, let's say two volts. Let's say two volts. So this thing requires three volts to operate. Well, the first thing we need to know about these uh, boards is how much power can they deliver for a pin? Because if you exceed that power, you might damage the board. And I've been looking for a seller and apparently I've been ripped off. I paid $2.05 for this thing. Anyway, so I just scrolled down and I found one seller here that says DC current for each pin is 40 milliamps. If you do not, do not know what that means, what that all means, uh, you should check out my video about electricity. Um, anyway. 40 milliamps so it can only have tiny little currents I'll put tiny little currents so I'm going with 20 milliamps that would be fine I guess this is what I did I connected a LED in series with a resistor here 100 ohms if I divide 2 volts by 100 ohms we have a current running through this of 20 milliamps and uh, each color LED is using a different voltage white LEDs are using 3 to 4 volts and uh, that's why I connected 100 ohm to check it out a bit and see how much current it, it, it flows through before I connect it to the board I was I think I was pretty safe with 100 ohms so yeah a, a green LED, for instance, uses, I think, two volts or two and a half or something. It, it varies per, per color. And that's way within the parameters of this board. The board will not blow up if I make this, if I connect this. So let's do that. By the way, if you do not know what the plus side of the LED is and what the negative side of the LED is, usually if, the, if you buy the new one of these legs will be longer than the other and that would be the positive side if you do not have a new LED like I did I used a LED that I found somewhere you can look inside the LED just look at it very closely you can see this 
a little flag there on top. That's the negative side. So in either case you can always identify what the negative side and what the positive side would be. I said I wanted to connect pin number 2 so instead of let built in I'm going to set pin 2 is going to be output and I'm going to write high to pin 2 and I'm going to write low to pin 2. Now I'm going to connect the board again to the USB connector. It's connected to port COM3. It's Arduino Nano at the old bootloader. And let's just upload this for a moment and see what happens. Okay, it up uploaded perfectly and it's no longer blinking at this point, so it should be blinking at pin 2. So I've got this board here. <laughs> I'm just going to connect a couple of pins. Let's see. These are. I need females to males. This one. This is a female. I'm going to connect it to pin 2. And instead of this power supply, this is the 5 volt part right next to the 100 ohm oh I'm just uh, there that's it now I need another male, male to female and I'm going to connect this to the ground it's just written on the board so it's not that difficult I'm going to connect this thing to the lead negative side so here we go. Let's see what happens. Nothing whatsoever because it's not powered yet. And there we go. It's blinking. Yay! So now that we know it works, we can continue with our LED strip. So what I would like to do now with this little board, I would like to have one little red light walk across this LED strip. Just start simple and then go on from there. The SK6812 timing is 0 0.3 microseconds, 0 0.9 microseconds. That's, well, that's 300 or 900 nanoseconds. I cannot program with regular commands in Arduino with these, this sort of timing. This is way too fast. So we're going to download a library. That's the easy way because they, the library takes care of the nitty gritty. I'm going to Tools, Manage Libraries, and uh, you can just write commands like uh, I want this LED to be yellow or something. Now that's going to be much easier. And here's the library manager. I'm going to find a LED strip library, and now I'm going to do LED strip. Yay, there it is. And I simply click on Install. And now we have LED strips installed, so we can use base pretty basic commands with this Arduino library to address LED strips. Let's see, in the examples, I can just scroll down a bit, and here it is, LED strip. And I can just select an example like LED strip tester. Here it is. And we can run that. But we have to change some things. Palulu LED strip 12, that's going to be port for pin 2. Create a LED strip and specify the pin it will use. Create the buffer for holding colors, 3 bytes per colors. Define LED count, well let's say that's it's 3 LEDs. After uploading, select serial monitor from the tools menu. In the input the box type a color and press enter. Ok, that's pretty simple. We can do that to test things out. Let's upload this thing. So I've uploaded this to this board. And now I'll just connect it to the computer with these USB cables. So uh, that's this one over here. This is a mini USB, not a micro, I think. Anyway, I'm connecting it to the board. So now it's powered. And now the LED strip needs to be powered as well. So that's this little thing. 
I connected it with pin 2, the data line. And I've got to power the LED strip as well, but I don't want to power the LED strip through the Arduino because it cannot supply lots of amounts of power. My adapter can. Well, not so much either, but okay. Anyway, so this is the ground. This is the power connection, like this. So now it's all connected, and I'm going to Tools, S Serial Monitor, Ready to Receive Colors. It's also here below here at 115,200. Now, the meaning of this is to enter some kind of color for these three LED strips that I put in there. Just moving it a bit like this. For instance, red would be, well, 200, comma, 0, comma, 0. And I have to end it with an exclamation mark. Like so. And press Enter. And yeah, it does nothing. Now what happens is, I have to reset the board first and power it up, and then it might work. 200, comma, 0, comma, 0, exclamation mark, enter. And here we go. For the people who do, are not familiar with programming, I have to explain a couple of things. I'm just going to remove these. This is comments anything between these two asterisk slash slash asterisk asterisk slash is common so I could just say my first let strip program for instance as well as these double slashes that's a single line comment you can write entire text in here but this would be on a single line a comment that's double slash now it starts off with including the polet blue LED strip library and then the LED strip is connected to pin 2 and that's basically part of the library as well and then we get the define well define means wherever you encounter this word this phrase let count like this you have to replace it by the number 3 I've got 18 LEDs on my LED strip so I'm going to say 18 now, next is an array, and before I explain what arrays are, I'm going to explain what net types are. So, for instance, int is an integer, and you can name anything uh, i, and you could say like equals zero, for instance, like this, and you have initialized the variable type integer with the number zero, and I could also say, for instance, double this uh, this number and you can name the right type type any type of name you would like for instance like this and this would be a floating point number and this would be a whole number i so that's that's a type and the variable name and optionally you can initialize this this variable like this or you can do that in the setup for instance like this I equals zero. For, uh, so in the setup, this this is this is part of the Arduino program that runs once, and the loop runs continuously. So that's between these uh, accolades. Accolades are always uh, used to to combine statements. Let's see. For instance, I could make a for loop. For i equals 0, i smaller than 4, i equals i plus 1. This would be a loop. You start with i equals 0. The condition is i, I equals is smaller than 4. And after each iteration, after executing this loop, the i is increased by 1. And then you could say, for instance, write hello, for instance, like this. And this would uh, be written to the serial monitor. It would write hello four times. So that would be nice. But you could also just say, if I have multiple statements to execute within this loop, you use these accolades. So that's basically the loop. As for arrays, 
you can see here square brackets let count that's an array for instance um, int int r numbers so I've got an integer r numbers and this is an array I'm not gonna define any size to it equals for instance again accolades like this 0 comma 0 comma 0 comma 0 now you have four numbers within this sing single variable and I could just say for instance r numbers i equals i plus 1 so it starts with 0 this would be the, the first element uh, i would be 0 and this would be 1 and this would be 2 so the array starts with element 0 r numbers 0 equals 6 for instance you could put it in the setup or anything would fill this number with number 6 so you have a list of numbers and it's indexed within, within these square bra brackets like this I could also not initialize it I said it, it's optional to do that I could just say like this and then I'm just going to specify a size like 4 and in order to fill these numbers I could put this for instance in the setup our numbers i equals 0 oh, I always have to end with semicolon every statement needs to be ended with semicolon like this I put this in the setup and after this is loop has run I would be 4 at that moment because that's the condition by which it terminates this loop so as you can see I initialized the program with int i so I, I declared that I'm going to be using this variable in the program I don't use our numbers so I'm going to just remove that now RGB color now that's an, a completely different thing this is an object this is part of the library as well the let's rip library it's not a specific type and that's why it's not blue it's it's orange or so you could regard this as a variable that also that contains more than one variable uh, for instance let me just remove this for a moment I'm not going to use cereals here I'm not much of a breakfast guy anyway like this here's the object RGB color color and it contains variables and you use a dot in between to specify which variable within color you need so the red portion would be 255 for instance 0 0 and that would create this color to be red now this is an array of this type so here you have colors is color um, and this is u int 16 whatever I'm just going to use i it's good enough and this is the loop and this assigns this color red to this colors array I could just as well say colors i dot red equals 255 I don't need this part I'm just going to screen red green blue I want the color red 0 0 and this I runs up to let count and the last thing that we do is is write this color array to the let strip let strip is one of those variables or objects that contains commands as well so not only you can have uh, variables colors for instance that has sub variables as you could call them they also can contain com uh, their own specific commands so colors i red that's a sub variable of this object colors 
this will color all the LEDs red in the LED strip, but I wanted to make it walk along the LED strip with one single, one single LED at a time. And uh, how we're going to do that, we need something more than this. I'm not going to need another variable, like integer current color. I'm going to initialize current color in the setup. Current color equals zero. It needs to be filled with some value to start out with. And then I'm going to make, make some changes here. Now, if i is the same as, and that's a double equal sign, if i is the same as current color, then colors i is red component is full red otherwise it needs to be black as well else equals zero and then it's black so now now if uh, current color is zero so only the first led will be red at this point and now it needs to be moving around it's moving, it moved, needs to move along the LED strip. So after I've written to the LED strip, I'm going to increase current color. Uh, current color plus plus. And it needs to be zero once it's ran through all the LEDs. So if current color is the same as LED count, current color is jumps back to zero equals zero and now I need some delay to this loop so I'm going to delay just like the LED strip like the blink program delay 200 milliseconds and I think that's it so after this loop it will delay 200 it has increased current color oh just a typo here current color by one yeah and it will jump back to zero if it's reached 18 in this case let's upload this thing and see what it looks like so now all I need to do is connect this to pin 2 where is it again digital 2 that's right there connect it here and now I have to power the board. So I'm going to connect it to the computer once again. And it's not working out very, oh, there we go. Oh, it just doesn't connect too well somehow. Either my computer is interfering with it, so I have to power it with these. Let's try that. So this is the ground. That's this little pin, and it won't stay on. Lovely. And this is the power input. Yeah, and now it's just running this LED strip, so. Isn't it lovely? Now, um, let's make it more interesting. We're going to add some more color to it. Uh, let's say six more colors. So I'm going to uh, define a template, which is this RGB color type template. And I'm going to define six colors. And I'm going to do that in the setup like this. So now I have six colors and I'm gonna have multiple LEDs run across the LED strip and each time they move they change to a different color. So how do we do that? Well I'm going to use a modulus function like this. 
if um, I percent let's say every four let strips I percent four so the modulus is uh, actually the remainder of the divider uh, if you have I equals 5 for instance you divide it by 4 and you have a remainder of 1 now colors I equals template and now I need a template okay so we've got six colors so it's going to be I plus 1 if it's 0 if it's uh, running, yeah, okay, I plus one percent six, yeah, equals, uh, yeah, I'm going to do this, colors I equals template, and then this modulus function in square brackets, yeah, else I'm going to set some uh, accolades in between these else color red and that's it I think this uh, should do the trick well, let's see if we upload it what happens and I'm going to upload this to see if there's any errors in here oh plenty uh, template expected unqualified ID before template I think I'm not supposed to use template okay let's just make template temp like so ctrl H for find and replace template for temp replace all so let's see what it does now still some errors colors I equals colors equals temp i plus one okay let's see now it's done uploading so no errors let's connect it to the led strip here's the board here's the led strip here's the data line and let's power it up for a moment and see what happens next well this is the ground And this is VIN. Now we just have to connect the data line to see what happens, I suppose. Pin 2. It's powered, as you can see. Uh, it's not doing that much. Although every four LED strips you have uh, LED on somehow it's not running along so did I forget to increase something here let's see I think uh, this is our culprit it should not be zero it should be zero one two three four if it's zero yeah of course the LEDs will stand still uh, so we have to add another loop I suppose around this so let's say for int j equals 0 j is smaller than 4 j plus plus and put some accolades around it now you always have to indent a bit like this and then I'd say equals J I think this should do the trick let's try it this time wait a minute I'm not done yet this loop this outside loop should be let's strip it should write the, the colors upon each iteration of these four and delay 200 and I don't need current color anymore so we're going to do this and this is indented as well right the led strip yeah I almost forgot that so I suppose it's all right now 
let's see what it does so I connected it and here you are lights running running along this LED strip so basically that's it about LED strips and oh, <laughs> these connections are not very solid here <laughs> so anyway that's how it works now I'm going to continue for the bumper card, uh, card uh, setup and I need four of these the bumper card setup is uh, 30 centimeters long and 20 centimeters wide from a LED strip a meter LED strip I'm going to use these 18 LEDs for the 30 centimeter distance and I'm going to use 12 LEDs for the 20 centimeter distance and I'll make this go around the entire bumper card uh, traction I found a bundle of joy here very thin wires and I hope they can transport this amount of power sure they can it seems just it's not that much and I have to solder them on these little islands here good grief four millimeters wide I'm going to be so happy let's just disconnect all unplug all of these I've got the males to females that's this drawer here I've got males to male that's this drawer here and I've got female to female in this drawer here like that there's a, there's a drawer for everything I have here available these are 18 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 let's cut this here so this is 18 this ought to be 12. I need one strip more like this. I've got it right here. Let's make a rectangle out of that one. I need short wires. These used to be network cables. And I think I'm going to use these. So 3 times 3. I've got 9 wires. So let's cut some up. Untangle them. And these are the wires we need. Uh, now we have to put some solder on them. Strip them all with this cutter. I love this wire cutter, it's, it's incredibly good. Now I have to put some solder on. So now I put them on this beam here. And I'm just going to put some tape across it and see if they hold a bit. And now I can solder them, I hope. One by one. the other side this actually works pretty well I hope the moment you say stuff like that it's going to change everything 
Murphy's always present. Let's see again. Just remove this one. So, these are solid. So this is 12, this is 18 lead strips. And these are 12 lead strips. Let's connect those. Interesting stuff. Put some solid on here too. I need some weight. Man, that's tiny. I think I need a magnifying glass for this. Add some solder to it. It's beautiful. I don't think they're touching, are they? The wires. That's number one. I think. Hmm. So that's done. Let's check the connections. Let's check the resistance of these things. 200 ohms. And check these out. Let's touch them first, yeah. So that we can see it works. We have no connection here, and we have no connection there. So it's good. Let's spray it a bit, if I still have some spray left in it. It's empty, but still, I'm gonna try. I suppose I need to use hairspray in this case. This flask is empty too. Isn't that great? So I just came back from the store. However, I might have come up some, with something even better. Because if you notice, this is pretty flexible. And these might come off somehow. So I want to insulate them with something sturdy. And here's my new experiment. I found some nail polish, or actually nail care, hardener. Extra straw. Let's try that. And I'm going to tip it here. Like so. Yeah. I think it might need some time to dry. It's pretty tough. I think this will hold stuff together. Yeah. It actually has the same ingredients as this hairspray though. Okay, let's check it out. It does conduct something. So let's just say we're going to spray it anyway. Yeah, 
like that. So now that's done. Yeah, that will fit. Sort of like this. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway. That's it. Put these two on. Yeah, I guess I have to use a marker of some kind to find out which one is the data line, which one is what. So permanent marker. Fine point permanent marker. Okay. So. The one on the left is the 5 volt line, and the one on the right is the ground, so this is the 5 volt line, we mark this one. And this one would be the ground. So now I know which one is which. And I can put this on here. Oh, this is going to be tight. Really, really tight. Mm -hmm. Shrink it. Lovely. And let's test it out. Let's get some males to females here. This would be the data line. This is the voltage power supply, voltage line, ground line. And get some power to the board. So, now let's see if this LED strip is actually working. Yay, it's working! So, a good LED strip. So now let me make some adjustments in the LED count to provide for 60 LEDs. Upload. Okay, it's done uploading and see what happens. Let's power it, power it up. Yeah, it should be correct. And there you go. So now we're just missing a few little things. First off, after a while, you've been bumping cars. Uh, the lights turn on and you can switch driver or whatever. That's what's missing in this thing here. So we need a time, a timer of some kind and well, else colors are set to zero and I want to set them to zero or 255. So this loop can keep running but I'm going to say lights and then let's say sort of something like this lights
So I have lights that is zero, like so. And out here, I'm going to remove all this. Colors I equals light. So that's usually a dark color. But now I need a timer, so I'm moving on to Arduino website. And the timer is in millis. It returns the number of millis seconds passed since Arduino board began running. So let's do that. We're going to say integer time, I suppose. Timer. And a time difference. Time difference. Time. Timer equals time. and time difference equals timer we'll see later so after this loop i'm going to say if lights dot red component equals zero If the lights are off, you need a time difference, say five minutes before it's turned on. So if time minus timer is greater than 60 seconds times five is 300 seconds times a thousand, 300,000 that's five minutes so if a time elapsed since this time timer becomes time lights red is 255 blue 255 green 255 and now the third lights will turn on else it has to check for a shorter period of time like say a 10 seconds or so that the lights are on If time minus time is greater than 10,000, the lights will turn off again. Like this, and then these become zero. Oh, wait a minute. Let's make this 10,000 as well at first. So I don't need to wait five minutes to see the effect if it works. Now let's upload and see what it does. Apparently the upload did, did fail. If I look at the example at Arduino, I can see time is an unsigned long. Let's see, time is millis. Okay, let's do that then. Uh-huh, millis. And timer is an unsigned long. So I need to unsigned long timer and time difference. Well, I don't need the time difference at this point. So, okay, timer. Let's see what it does. Millies. 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 Uh, timer, millis, I don't need this one. Apparently, okay, I suppose it's good. Let's see what it does. Should avoid loop. I missed something here. Oh, here. Ah. Semicolon. <laughs> These little mistakes. Now what? 
unexpected token where up here well then we just remove it upload it wait a minute is this a minus sign here this should be an equal sign let's see yeah I, I typed in the wrong key here let's make this 5000 for the time being waiting 10 seconds is too long as well let's do that so let's connect this data line once more voltage is connected let's see what happens five seconds yeah it's white and it's dark again there's a little thing missing which is I would like to see some flashes for the sparks and they're just small flashes in between at random so we have to go to the website Well, this is random. Um, a random number between minimum and maximum minus one. Data type long. So, okay. Uh, what else? I need to say, for instance, this one. Copy. like this okay so that's going to be a long um, flash let's make it flash point that sounds interesting flash point and now we put in something random we already have the timer in there, but mm, yeah, this needs to be fast flashes, so I'm going to put it in here. Flash point equals millis plus random. I'll give it a 2000. The first needs to be in the setup. And this one is going to be an if. So, if flash point is smaller than millis. like that we need flash color or just flash flash let's make this 240 red green 240 and red green 255 we put this in front of it yeah let's put it in front of it and then we say uh, colors i equals flash delay 5 I need to change these as well. Flash green, flash, that should be like this. I don't think uh, a single LED color will 
make any impact and if these flashes need to be stronger so I think I, I need to do three LEDs to flare up uh, so so I'll do flash you know what I do I just say select flash four four numbers and what, zero one two and three and flash zero is this oh, uh, oh like so I'm going to let light up three LEDs if flashpoint millis flashpoint millis random colors colors I flash one equals colors I flash two equals colors I plus one flash three equals colors I plus two like that colors I equals flash zero color I plus one equals slash zero plus two equals slash zero then we flash let's strip right colors zero and colors I equals flash one I plus one equals flash two I plus two equals flash three and then the program can continue so there's a little bit of a delay I'll make it 50 to make it noticeable of course colors colors I'm still not done yet I need a random point too I cannot use I I need an integer integer flash let let's just call it T and now um, random 2000 T equals and random I have to uh, cast type cast here because it provides longs random is provides a long number and t is just an integer so 57 so now the i needs to be t like that and there's another issue if the lights are on no cars are driving so it should not flash if flash point is low, low, lower than millis and lights for instance the red component equals zero so as soon as the lights are off this will happen now there's a delay of 50 milliseconds here which kind of interrupts the total loop as well the total loop is 200 and uh, when it's flashing it's 250 that might be noticeable so I'm going to introduce another variable here which is flash time let's say here an integer um, flash time like so and then well usually flash time would be zero we 
because it's not flashing but after this point when they get through here flash time equals 50 we delay an amount like flash time we could even make it make that a, a random number if need be but let's not flash time and delay 200 minus flash time so the total delay will always be 200 well let's make it 800 it'll slow it down a slight bit because well this should be uh, you should not exaggerate with these lights now that's it I suppose let's see if it works out yeah well let's take a look well I connected the uh, uh, meter led strip to this aluminium profile <coughs> and this is the thing that's going to be surrounding the bumper cars I think it's pretty neat and concerning LED strips and miniature setups you have to be very modest with, with the lighting and everything because you would like to add to the attraction and not become the attraction as you can see there's little flashes but they're not very clear they're more flashes for in reality because well I think it's the frame rate so it's kind of pretty And that's basically it. And now the ride's over, the lights come on. All aboard. And in 20 seconds or so, it will switch back. And that's that. I will provide the, um, the programming on my website. So I'll provide a link to that. And you might be interested to let, take a look at how to program these LED strips and programming in general. So, I hope you enjoyed this and see you next time with another video about whatever comes to mind. <laughs>